Okay. Um, so, so I uh, appreciate everybody sh uh, sh showing up here today. So today we're, we're going to talk about uh, addressing the challenges, the many challenges of cognitive dysfunction and with uh, orthomolecular medicine and, uh, <clears throat> and high powered uh, deep tissue photo medicine. Um, I um, have one disclosure. Um, I've been working with uh, Aspen Lasers Company um, who, who has uh, really opened up my, my mind to a completely uh, cutting edge approach that it, it just has not even been uh, really explored yet, but all of these signs are amazingly positive, uh, full of potential for literally turning on the light inside of a person's head, if you will. Um, it, it really addresses um, an inaccessible problem. And that's what we'll talk about today. Uh, an otherwise inaccessible problem, uh, a very unique approach. So by the end of the talk, um, everybody can hopefully understand the uh, the problems and the solutions uh, for effectively targeting the the, the causes of, of neurodegeneration, and um, and we'll we'll re understand how nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, the uh, end product of vitamin B three or niacin or niacinamide or or these other forms, it it, it provides unparalleled bioenergetic contribution with neuroprotection, really dramatic neuroprotection. Uh, it's sort of rate limiting on the way to uh, nerves dying in, in, in uh, a lot of stimuli. And then uh, we'll be, uh, uh, we should be more aware of uh, Dr. Dale Bredesen's work, who uh, he started the, the Buck Institute and uh, he's, he's, he's really had incredibly successful outcomes in reversing some Alzheimer's disease and written uh, several books on it and published hundreds of papers. Uh, he's, he's, um, and he's, he's been doing uh, really kind of a test followed by almost kind of a shotgun approach with a lot of, um, a lot of uh, integrative type of medicine uh, with incredible success. However, they still have not um, just simply considered high doses of NAD precursors or, or thiamine, um, and, and this really has tremendous promise. There's, a, there's just many papers to support this. And, and then we'll, we'll cover this uh, really cutting edge technology, uh, transcranial high powered photobiomodulation. This, is, this uses lasers. Uh, to reach un otherwise inaccessible damaged tissues. Uh, we'll we'll uh, <clears throat> understand that uh, monotherapy does not appear to be um, very successful. It's not ideal. Uh, even, you know, my favorite molecule uh, is niacin and, and glutamine, but um, that's not always enough. Um, all pathways almost everybody needs magnesium and, and, and so on. So uh, it's good to have something like sea salt, just as one example, or, or an egg, which provides everything to create a life form. So the essential amino acids and all that. Um, and and we'll, we'll really uh, focus on the, the factors that must be considered to address cognitive dysfunction and dementia. <clears throat> so, um, Currently in America, we've invested probably billion do billions of dollars trying to, to, um, <clears throat> to treat this uh, looming uh, problem with, with Alzheimer's that, that there's projections that can, it, it might bankrupt Medicare, you know, if, if we don't, you know, adjust the finances. Um, and so it's, it's been a big failure. And, and, and a lot of the problem is that if you look up here, uh, most of the, the uh, randomized controlled trials have focused on this endpoint pathology, um, these amyloid bodies. Um, 
amyloid means uh, these proteins kind of do like a phase transition to something that's actually solid. And, and so we can see this. And so we're, we're sort of misled by the illusion that, um, that uh, this is what we have to stop. But, but really this is more of just a, an endpoint of a problem that starts over here. Um, also focusing on just uh, antibodies and things uh, over here has been a, 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 a tragic failure. Uh, and it continues to be, um, but but over here, we if we focus on the bioenergetics and the protein folding uh, to to uh, the bioenergetics is even ahead of of protein folding. The, uh, the protein folding is really a stress response to all this, and 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 here's some um, some particular ones we'll focus on, and then transcranial uh, photobiomodulation is. The, the closest thing to a physical intervention, if you will, since surgery is not an option. Um, <clears throat> so uh, here, here we have uh, a summary of, of the, uh, the, these diseases, these, these protein, these uh, neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, the, these are the ones that have a, a characteristic proteinopathy um, so uh, nerves appear to be a, a, a tissue that um, is particularly susceptible to uh, proteins sort of uh, falling out of solution at the end and, and being associated with these problems. For, for Alzheimer's, it's beta amyloid or tau predominantly, but there's actually some mixture and overlap amongst all of us. Um, with Parkinson's disease, uh, alpha synuclein is, is the more characteristic proteinopathy, uh, the protein that's falling out of solution, and, and ALS and Huntington's disease. Um, here's the uh, FDA approved treatments. Um, these don't, uh, uh, yeah, so very few of these uh, delay progression of the disease, though. We really don't have much at all that uh, works for these diseases, as I'm sure you're, uh, you're very aware. Um, so this just shows you an overview uh, of, of over 200 uh, RCT failures, um, uh, randomized control failures, trying to, to find a drug for Alzheimer's, the most common dementia in America. And um, the, these are all the ones that are terminated in gray. You can see that, um, the ones affecting, uh, focusing on, on uh, the amyloids have been uh, very, very much a failure. And, and some of the ones on neurotransmission in this green here have, um, have, have are, are approved and, and successful. But what has not been tested, any, any of the essential molecules. So that's the uh, orthomolecular molecules that are by definition required for human cellular life. These are uh, not really uh, tested in, in RCTs, uh, but there's something that we can do and dose matters, uh, especially high dose niacin and thiamine. Uh, there's a lot of uh, evidence to support all this. So um, <clears throat> uh, neurological disorders, leading cause of disability and second leading cause of death worldwide. 99% uh, failure rate with RCTs in America. Uh, and what's um, be become painfully clear is that the, the target needs to be shifted away from these uh, proteinopathies, which are uh, sort of a it's too late kind of situation. Oh, I, I, I shouldn't say that, but uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's, not, um, it's not that simple. We have to, that's a stress response. Uh, that's the end result of a stress response. And we need to stop the stress. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this just shows you uh, a, a, a stunning new discovery uh, where the, the central, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the central dogma of molecular biology is, is simply that uh, DNA is used to make RNA in the nucleus, this occurs, then the RNA goes to the cytoplasm where proteins are made, and then those proteins go back into the nucleus. So proteins aren't made in the nucleus. However, 
uh, just published, and there's a lot of research now, that during stress, you have this uh, formation of, uh, this is either a heat shock or, um, or uh, some other stresses like anaerobic. Uh, proteins accumulate inside the nucleus and, and they can make protein. And, and, and the point of, the, of this I'm, I'm showing is that this is happening on an amyloid body that forms. And, and now it's well known that there's a, a whole bunch of um, proteins in nature that do this uh, liquid to solid phase transition. These are amyloids. They're, they're literally like rocks in your cells. And um, you, th this is defined by X-ray diffraction patterns that can see these hard structures at the subcellular level. So they're not just, uh, you know, people uh, have, a lot of us have, have only been familiar with amyloid beta in the context of Alzheimer's, but the, these hard proteins have functions. Um, and, and then, so this just shows you here on the right, uh, my favorite model organism for about, uh, about uh, 10 years of my research career, the zebra fish. This is a live fish. Uh, it's only about the, the size of a, uh, half a penny or it's very small, maybe an ant. And, and you can see the cranial ganglia up here um, uh, in the backside of the fish and the, the egg yolk. This is a, a fish that's just one day old. And, and, uh, um, but, but, but what's the unique features of these uh, neurons that, that makes them so susceptible to all these uh, proteinopathies, these, these proteins falling out of solution. We don't, we don't see this pathology in, in other tissues as much. There is, a, it, it has been seen in muscles, but all these neurodegenerative diseases, uh, they have a protein falling out of solution and uh, accumulating. So, so what, what is unique about, about this tissue that, that, that this happens? Uh, and, and one of the unique aspects of neurons is that these tissues demand all the energy in the body. The brain only constitutes about 2% of the total body weight, but demands about 20% of energy consumption. So um, this is where we need to turn on the light. Um, and... <clears throat> And the other aspect is that uh, neurons generally cannot, they, they're not allowed to regenerate. They're, they're not allowed to just die and regenerate. Uh, our liver can regenerate our, our muscles, most of our body, but in, in, in the brain, there's, there's not, most of the cells do not have the opportunity to, to die and regenerate. They cannot take out, they, they, they make these proteins, they sit there and, and they, Stresses, uh, they have to rely on things like the lysozyme to the to, to the lysosome, sorry, to uh, to take out the trash, and so they need uh, heat shock protein that and, and other chaperones to to really uh, maintain this uh, stress response, uh, and 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 to just deal with uh, the fact they cannot just die and 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 that's not an option for taking out the trash. And, and what it looks like is that, that uh, there's a lot of data to support that um, things like vi vitamin B1 thiamine, uh, NAD, or, which is, uh, comes from vitamin B3, and photobiomodulation really address both of these problems, uh, the energy demands and uh, boosting the, uh, especially uh, NAD, uh, boosting the protein chaperone, protein folding pathway to keep these proteins from falling out in neurodegenerative disease. So, so here's just an overview of, of the failures and what we can, we can learn about how to um, learn from this. Uh, so here's the uh, sort of wrong targets from all those r randomized controlled trials. Uh, many uh, pharma, uh, biologics and, and pharmaceuticals have been targeting these amyloids and, and other pathways. Uh, some of the neurotransmission pathways have worked. Um, and, and the future, uh, I would say, should be uh, focused on bioenergetics and protein folding for uh, trying to successfully treat this uh, 
far too prevalent neurodegenerative uh, diseases. Uh, additional concerns are, um, uh, you know, drug delivery. We, we cannot get, um, a, a lot of drugs fail because they cannot get into the brain. Uh, and, then, and then the other complex issue with the brain is that, you know, it's a surgery is not an option. It's, it's just too complicated uh, to, to go into something with millions of uh, synapses. And some of the solutions uh, to, to this problem can be high-powered photo, transcranial photobiomedulation. That, that means using a laser to get light in there, uh, which is, is a, a safe approach. And, and as you'll see, it's effective. Um, uh, you know, uh, it can be effective. Another possibility that um, is, is, uh, should be considered experimentally and it, it is intranasal. I, it, I think there's great potential. Uh, it's just something people don't think about, but it's a, it's, it is a route to the brain and that has great promise. Uh, I'll show you one experiment. So, uh, so now we'll just cover the basics of NAD. Uh, <clears throat> NAD is, is a real, um, it, it's, it's, it's the Achilles heel of humanity historically. Um, it, it, it's, it's, I would say, the second worst uh, nutritional deficiency in history. Uh, I, think, I think maybe scurvy was the worst uh, when they had, uh, uh, had to kidnap people at, at, at the, the harbors to get sailors on the boats to go out because they knew that if they <laughs> went out, they would be dying um, pretty quickly because they didn't know why. But uh, so the losses due to pellagra epidemics were the greatest known of any in the history of the United States in the first uh, from 1900 to 1930s um, in America. Um, <clears throat> there was about three million people suffering and, and over 100,000 people dying. Um, the, they had uh, ins insane asylums in, in places like South Carolina. Um, uh, in, in the United States uh, with people with all kinds of uh, skin problems and, and they were just literally dying um, uh, all over the South. The president uh, commissioned an epidemiologist to, 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 who uh, noticed people who had uh, milk, uh, had a cow, they were okay. And um, eventually they figured out that uh, brewer's yeast uh, could be used. And eventually they isolated B3 from the brewer's yeast but the, the, uh, the pellagra nutrition deficiency speaks volumes to the susceptibility of the human body machine to, the, to this uh, molecular part. Uh, here's a more NAD history uh, from, uh, the, they did mandatory fortification in the in 1940s and uh, the historical implications of that, uh, you know, no more world wars ever since. Um, I don't know. There's there's a lot of um, <clears throat> things that uh, historically implications that we don't that, that 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 may be a part of this this history as well. Uh, in in 1955, uh, Abram Hoffer did some of the first experiments with uh, really high doses of niacin, gram quantities, and they showed that it could correct uh, cholesterol levels. It raises the good cholesterol more than any known pharmaceutical, more than all statins. It, it decreases the bad things like triglycerides. It decreases them dramatically. This is three times one gram a day or three times 500 milligrams a day of niacin. Uh, if you uh, get your patients to do this, uh, maybe start them at 200 milligrams um, and until they notice a flush. Because if you start them at this high flush, so, some people, it, it really scares them. The, the flush response is kind of a vasodilation where you can, you can turn kind of red and um, it's healthy, it's, it's normal. If you don't flush, you're, that's uh, uh, more prevalent in schizophrenics. And, and it's something, it's been done for 60 years. It's completely safe. But the point is um, you, you, you don't wanna scare people but I, I think starting them on, on a gram dosage, it can terrify some people. 
uh, it's it, uh, so you might start low if you want to correct lipodystrophy, and then uh, so the 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 most famous classic forms of niacin uh, of, of vitamin B three were discovered about 1940, but then in 2004 a third form was discovered, uh, nicotinamide riboside. This is a typo, and uh, by Charles Brenner, who's um, just done the incredible work. Um, <clears throat> And uh, yeah, so we, we can cover that later. Um, and then there's a ton of research, just a ton of research in the lifespan and longevity uh, research community, looking at all the model organisms, whether it's yeast, mice, fish, anything that shows NAD is, is uh, central to uh, life, sort of life extension and, and uh, lifespan. And then uh, it's, it's been a shame that there hasn't been a lot more um, just simply high dose niacin studies for far more uh, uh, indications than, than lipodystrophy. This, this is the most established with the highest quality data. Uh, but um, <clears throat> last year was a wonderful study out of Finland where they did three times one gram a day of niacin and they reduce, these people have uh, age-related mitochondrial myopathy. Um, these people were cured. Uh, their, their fatty acid, their, their fatty liver was reduced by 50%. The strength of their muscles was, was increased by as much as tenfold uh, just by taking niacin and boost, to boost the NAD. NAD levels were raised uh, even sixfold in the controls, so that's you and me, uh, which is a really high amount. And uh, it supports what I personally believe, and I've tested and compared all of these NAD precursors, that, in it, that niacin uh, would appear to, to, to be the, the best one for uh, a lot of situations. It, it, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just incredible. So. Uh, what can we learn about NAD from, from all the genetic research? What good is genetic research uh, at a practical level? And, and it's a lot. It's a lot. If you know how to use it, um, there's databases out there that will really expand your mind. I um, worked with uh, bioinformaticians at, uh, in Switzerland who, who work with the Unipro uh, protein database, which has all of the unique proteins linked to genes in the humans, not any more, not any less. And, and you can determine uh, using these databases and a, and a carefully, uh, uh, with careful criteria defined search, you can identify all of the gene, genes that require uh, something for their function. And this is the most important thing because this tells you what we can do. This tells you, for example, you realize that vitamin B3 uh, is, NAD, since it requires NAD or NADH or NADP or NADPH, um, it, it is required for over 450 reactions. And you can see my, um, at my website, I, 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 sh I show you this. this show, so it shows you all of the enzymes and all of the uh, proteins, the sirtuins and everything that require NAD. So um, then if you wanted, you, could, you can go to those genes, figure out the functions of those genes and realize uh, anybody could be suffering uh, because they, that gene is not working as well. Um, and, 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 and part of the, the mechanism for all this is, for example, um, since these, all these 474 uh, genes, they bind to NAD, but, but we all, we can have little differences in that binding domain, like a, just a amino acid substitution. So therefore that for in this individual, they have less, they have a, a lower binding affinity for NAD. So they require more NAD. So they require more than the 40 milligrams of uh, niacin that uh, is recommended for da RDA, the recommended daily amount they require more for that gene to function. And, and, and so the complexity is just staggering. And there's like specific examples now where this has been proven uh, to the rigor of um, a whole genetic, uh, a particular gene. Uh, but again, uh, magnesium 
is just one example of something that is required in so many genes. And now, now one thing to keep in mind though um, is, is something like calcium. Uh, I, 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 calcium is required in endless genes, but the problem with calcium is uh, you have to be, in, in my opinion, you, do, you don't wanna even do calcium supplementation because it's been shown to uh, cause an increase in all cause mortality because even though calcium is required for all these things, excessive calcium forms rocks in a sense. Uh, you know, we have calcifications in, in our aorta, for example, all of us. And, and um, but magnesium is very different. You, you can, you almost cannot overdo magnesium. So that's one where supplementation is, is invaluable. I, so, uh, but, uh, so here we're getting back to uh, NAD and, and neurodegeneration. So th this, this study in 2004 was, was uh, really amazing by uh, Jeffrey Milbrandt's group. Um, so they, there's this mouse that you take the nerves out of the mouse and put it in a petri dish and then you cut you cut the nerves away from the nuclear cell body and those nerves uh, they've been cut they will die within you know 12 hours or something uh, in a normal mouse but in this mouse the the nerves will can stay alive for as long as three weeks without the nucleus and they could, so they, they, they figured out the difference of this mouse's nerves and found out that it has a triplication of, an, of, a, of a gene that makes NAD. And, and then they, uh, they, they found that if they take the wild type mouse and add NAD, it keeps the nerves alive longer. And if they, uh, then they focused on, well, how, what's using NAD? And they, they determined the sirtuins, uh, it looks like sirtuins are big in this. And they, um, so then they added an activator of the sirtuins, which uh, is resveratrol and resveratrol also really helped. And, and resveratrol is phenomenal. I, I've done experiments with my own hands and zebrafish. I take resveratrol, it, it works on, on this pathway as well. Um, so uh, we're, we're, we're focused now still on the uh, bioenergetic failure that occurs in, in uh, uh, the energetically demanding neurons. Uh, and, and here we are focusing on NAD. Uh, so here's glycolysis where we're using glucose to, uh, to make ATP for energy. And uh, in in a anaerobic stress, like a stroke, um, we have to do these additional steps really quickly to keep making um, ATP. And this requires NAD. So NAD can keep cells alive when there's no oxygen. And this shows a dramatic example in mice where they occluded the cerebrovascular arteries and they sprayed NAD in one of the nose, nostrils of the mouse. And you can see the difference in the hemispheres of the brain where it, when, the, when they sprayed it on this side, it, 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 can, keep the, uh, it can keep the cells alive. So this, this shows you how important NAD is for keeping cells alive, uh, for example, in a, in a stroke or uh, as you saw back here, um, just nerves dying, keeping them alive. So this is, this is what we're trying to do, uh, keep our nerves alive um, with the neurodegenerative diseases. So the question is, okay, what's the best road to NAD? And here's my favorite niacin and, and uh, I, I've been comparing uh, all of the uh, forms. And, and then glutamine is um, in, incredibly interesting and, and promising. It's just been completely under the radar and unexplored as a precursor to NAD. But glutamine is phenomenal for energy because it, it can 
also contribute to what's called substrate level phosphorylation in the mitochondria. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not only important for making NAD from tryptophan and the, the niacin pathway, but it can even contribute to another way of forming uh, ATP. So um, <clears throat> I, I've been obsessed for the past 15 years and I continue to be most excited about the question, what is the best way to boost NAD? And I, I still kind of agree with what, it was, it was Abram Hoffer's uh, favorite. He, he focused on high doses of niacin and niacinamide treating, uh, I think it's, I know it's over 5,000, but it may be as many as 10,000 patients total over, over his uh, lifetime. And he, he treated many patients with uh, niacin and niacinamide, I mean, thousands. And um, he, at the end of his life, he, he concluded that with schizophrenia, where he had seen really amazing uh, curative outcomes in, in some, in, in many uh, patients, at the end of his life, he concluded that some people have a really high dependence on niacin with as much as 18 grams, 18 grams of niacin a day, uh, taken and divided. Uh, you, you know, B vitamins are safe and they're cured. Uh, so, so um, yeah, so, so I, I compared all of these when I had my lab. This is the zebrafish at about uh, five days. You can see it's, it's small enough to put into uh, these baskets that I, I, the water was preconditioned to have no, no oxygen. Then, and then I can uh, look on the scope and see their hearts and, and I wait till the hearts have stopped beating. You can see the heart beating here. And, 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 then, and then I um, take them out and, and see who can recover. And, and you do the experiment so that um, you make sure everybody's you know, dying completely in, in, the, uh, in the untreated. And, and then I compared all of these uh, precursors, uh, tryptophan, uh, every, every single precursor except this one, but, uh, and I didn't, I didn't even think about glutamine at the time. <clears throat> and also I compared resveratrol because uh, it, it works in this pathway too. And, and survival, if I do co-incubation of all of these, uh, that's ni niacin, niacinamide, nictinamide riboside, NAD, nictinamide mononucleotide, tryptophan, tryptophan at one-tenth the concentration, quinolinic acid. This was a de departmental uh, molecule uh, of interest. Resveratrol, PARP inhibitors, and then the prostaglandin that is produced uh, by niacin with, associated with the flush. And you can see that uh, resveratrol was phenomenal for uh, keeping the animals alive. And, and then here's the NAD precursors and uh, niacin was, was, uh, was very good as well. Uh, NAD itself was good. So uh, I, I've done some other experiments where I've looked at NAD levels and, um, uh, but um, that just shows uh, a whole animal where this is a whole animal uh, responding to uh, these, uh, keeping the cells alive when they have no oxygen. The, um, so, so here we are continuing with uh, NAD for addressing bioenergetic failure of the demanding neurons. And uh, last year we had a, a wonderful publication um, from Anu's group in Finland um, I mean, this was, you know, niacin cures. How often do you hear cures anymore in any publication, let alone cell metabolism? I've never heard of it. But they finally looked at high doses of niacin. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the part of the problem is that uh, some of these a lot of studies have focused on this new form of vitamin B3 because it's being patented and, and sold for literally 100 times the cost of niacin. 
so they there's generally frequently no, no head to head comparison for obvious reasons and and this one though is is very exciting um it may be one of it may be the best actually but it's it's uh, nicotinamide mononucleotide is um, really exciting for diabetes and stuff, um, but it, it's a hundred times uh, higher and, and it may not be um, required. I, it, it, there, this is a very uh, active area of investigation. <clears throat> but uh, getting back to appreciating what you can do with niacin, uh, three times, it was three times one gram a day of niacin for three months, and this increased NAD by sevenfold. This is, uh, by comparison, the nicotinamide riboside, uh, which costs a hundred times as much. Uh, so for a month supply of this would be like uh, something like $500 uh, if you did three times one gram a day. And if you did three times one gram a day of niacin, it'd be about $5. They got about 1.4 fold uh, increase in NAD for, for this. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, so they had a decrease in liver fat by 50%. Um, so a lot of people have concerns with niacin and liver toxicity, but that's very misleading. Um, niacin, it, it, it increases NAD. NAD is associated with all of the, uh, the cytochrome P450 enzymes that are measured with liver toxicity. So, they, so a lot of enzyme levels, though, their activities can go up, but it's not a true sign all the time of, of toxicity. It's just, that's not, a, it's, not, not a, it's misleading. Uh, so it's, it, it's, it's probably actually very beneficial for your liver. It appear, definitely is uh, in, as shown here um, in this situation. So they also looked at muscle strength. You know, it was uh, age onset myopathy. They looked at uh, about five different muscle sets and exercises, very thorough, and they had uh, dramatic increases back to normal, curing age onset, age related onset myopathy. Some patients uh, had a little bit of anemia. I haven't been able to figure out why. Um, it, maybe it's some kind of B, B vitamin imbalance. Uh, I appreciate any feedback on, on what that could be. Um, so uh, there's also been basic studies that NAD supplementation can prevent uh, what's known as muscle amyloidosis. Um, so th this strongly suggests to me that, you know, the sarcopenia that occurs with all of us as we age and um, can, can be uh, addressed with, with niacin. And this just shows the increase in NAD. Uh, you can see even in the controls, there's a huge increase in NAD levels. And this shows you increases in uh, strength, um, and, and, and decreases in liver fat. So uh, to, to hammer home the point, niacin, uh, 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 it, it's the only one that really dramatically corrects uh, lipodystrophy this, to date. Um, and I, and I, so the, the, see, cause niacin has a separate pathway that um, causes this flush response. It's completely different from this. It binds to a seven transmembrane G protein coupled receptor and, and releases uh, prostaglandins that are beneficial in this case. Um, and it's very inexpensive. It's, you can get bulk powder, take three grams a day for a month for $6. Um, and it may be that it is best taken with glutamine because let's say you have high dose niacin, you're going along here, maybe glutamine is going to be rate limiting. Glutamine is fascinating. Um, it's the, yeah, so we, it, we can talk about that as, as requested. Um, so now we're gonna talk about addressing uh, proteinopathy. As we mentioned, uh, neurons, uh, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, they, they often have proteins falling out of solution and, and we need to keep those proteins folded. We need the stress response to, to be working. Um, <clears throat> so one, one pathway is hit this transcription factor, heat shock factor, it, it increases the heat shock proteins which are, which are involved in folding 
folding all these proteins and keeping them from, from turning, falling into, turning into rocks that just won't come back. Um, and it's been shown that uh, NAD can, can boost all this um, in a, just a whole bunch of studies. Um, uh, Lou Gehrig's patients and multiple sclerosis patients which have, you know, this is, these are neurodegenerative conditions. They, they have low, uh, deficient, they have low NAD uh, in, their, in their CSF and, and so on. Uh, this, this enzyme is, it is, makes ATP, I mean, NAD, it makes NAD. And it's been shown in mouse models to provide protection uh, for Lou Gehrig's uh, protein models and Lou Gehrig's disease animal models, and uh, similarly in Drosophila, and uh, this 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 enzyme N M N A T. It's it's right uh, it's, it's right here. This is the same enzyme that in in that mouse where the where the nerves even if you cut them with a razor blade they're alive for as many as three weeks, whereas normally they they'd be dead in in one day. This enzyme it's 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 so important for. Um, uh, basically recycling the NAD. When this is uh, cleaved, there's a pathway to recycle it. And, and this enzyme will, will keep the cells alive um, and it will participate in, in this, uh, keeping the proteins from the turning into to rocks essentially with the, these, all these uh, neurodegenerative so, so niacin and glutamine, I, I would suggest make a lot of sense for um, the, the whole bioenergetic collapse in uh, neurodegenerative disease and in um, addressing protein folding and, the, and even uh, oxidative, uh, basic oxidative stress. This just so is another uh, pathway, uh, another connect, connection with another uh, way of viewing it with NAD, uh, working through the, the transcription factor to, uh, uh, and, and how, how this, this uh, heat shock factor actually also um, increases NAD. So the, the, here, here I'm just showing the advantages of, of niacin, which, which not only goes to NAD, but it goes through a completely different pathway that, that causes the flush response that is, that, that is associated with correcting the lipid dystrophy. And, and, and that flush response is, is your blood vessels at the very ends uh, expanding, vasodilating. And this occurs in your brain. You, you feel it with an increase in focus of concentration. You will feel niacin. Uh, the, uh, you know, most vitamins you might not, you might feel a little more sustained activity and energy like with thiamine and you'll taste thiamine, but, <clears throat> But with niacin, you will feel it, and and um, yeah. So you need to get to know it and get to know your dose. And it, it's best to take it after you eat. Um, but you know, um, you just get to know it. It's completely safe. Um, so niacin has this uh, unique delivery aspect. This is very very uh, eye opening when you think about it, because you can also consider taking niacin with anything. Because if you have this vasodilation at the end of your, your capillary beds, you have expansion and now uh, other things can get in there perhaps to, to deliver things that otherwise might not, you know, other, to, to, the, to, to where, where we need to deliver things. So you might even consider thinking about niacin in conjunction with things to get better delivery of um, whatever your favorite molecule, resveratrol, anything. <clears throat> So now we're going to uh, get to more of a, um, I, I almost want to say physical approach, but I, you know, anyways, it's, uh, it's uh, photobiomodulation therapy. So this is, this is using a laser to, um, to, to get in there, transcranial photobiomodulation. So um, the history of photobiomodulation is, is uh, rock solid. It's, it, it's, um, and I, I only learned all of this in the last four years, um, thanks to uh, so, so some wonderful people. Um, so uh, in about 1960, in the 1960s, they, they wanted to determine if, if lasers cause cancer in mice, and they, they, they shaved the mice and just shined it on the, on the mouse, and they found that it, it uh, 
the hair grew back faster. And this is, this is shown now you can actually get benefits in, in, in with about six, I think it's 650 or 700 nanometers. Um, this is well established and, and used now with, with hats and so, so on, it, 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 can it can help. And then uh, in, the, in the 1970s, um, they were treating uh, with the helium neon lasers, um, these, uh, they did, did a lot of wound healing. Uh, um, I, I forget the name of, of the, the type of wound, but they had really dramatic, very clear recovery in the 70s. Um, and, and so everybody was just blown away by this. And, and then, and then uh, so, so it really, really exploded then. And, and now it's gotten to the point today where it's, it's, it's part of the guidelines for treating oral mucositis, which, which comes from high dose chemotherapy and, and radiation, because uh, it because this light really really does. I mean, and this is you know you can you can see wounds, you can see you can see what's going on in the mouth in the mouth. But but with the brain, it, that's always been the, the 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 problem is 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 how do you measure anything, you know? And and I, we're gonna get there because it's been proven now um, with the ways that you can you can. Uh, in the brain that it, it, it's working there too. So this is really exciting and, and, and on, the, on the cusp of, of what's happening. So, so uh, it's, it's well established at this point. It has, it, 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 uh, photobiomodulation can provide really, really dramatic pain relief, um, herpes, neuralgia, and, and many conditions. Um, uh, and, and High powered lasers, uh, as we're going to cover, uh, they are required to get into the deep tissues to administer sufficient doses, doses of light uh, deep in the deeper tissues, um, even uh, with responses uh, that would appear to be in the hippocampus. Um, uh, yeah, so, and then, and then we have uh, th this idea of uh, this theralite, which, which is a whole whole nother thing that um, I, I, I haven't learned about yet, but um, uh, th there is some degree of systemic effect. So uh, even though um, light um, that is, is, is not that uh, 60 watts, this is, this is, these are um, less power. So, we, but, but the effects um, can go kind of everywhere because the circulating uh, cells can receive the light and then go everywhere. Um, and, and so this is just a whole nother, um, another, whole nother uh, level of consideration, but we won't really talk about that too much. Um, so at this point, just, just uh, understand that there's over 5,000 publications now. Uh, doc, uh, Dr. Heiskanen has a wonderful database. You can you can see these uh, pub, uh, organized. Uh. And so, how does how does it work? Uh, there's been a lot of focus on uh, the fourth complex of the uh, mitochondrial respiration chain, which has cytochrome C oxidase. You hear the word cytochrome. It absorbs very strongly, I, I think 650 nanometers. And so for the longest time, we've believed that this is the main reason, the mechanism. Um, but the, at the end of the day, it clearly works. I mean, it clearly increases ATP. This has been shown a hundred times. And um, I think that Andre Summer has really cleared up this uh, whole thing. Uh, he's, he's done amazing work showing that, um, you know, there was a Nobel Prize showing that the ATP synthase in mitochondria that uses the voltage gradient in the mitochondria, it's, it's spinning 9,000 RPM. Uh, he, he taught me this. Uh, he was very generous uh, in teaching me this. And in the first three layers of water on the outside of the mitochondria, there is uh, a certain viscosity that creates drag on this uh, rotation. 
and during oxidative, well, this is getting to be too complex, but it, it basically with oxidative stress, this uh, ATP synthase, um, it's, it, 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 the, the light will uh, affect that, the RPMs and synthesis ultimately of ATP by changing the viscosity of the water that's in the first three layers of that membrane. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, that's, 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 he, he really has um, progressed the basic research of how photomyomodulation works. But uh, the bigger point is that it, it's like a light bulb. It uh, turns on ATP and, and we'll get to the clinical real soon here. And, and so this just shows you the concerns with any kind of adverse effect. That is if you have, you know, too high of a, um, power and heat, you know, you're going to damage the, you know, the tissues uh, out here. But uh, there, it, you know, uh, it, we'll, yeah, that, that's the concern, but we'll, we'll get to that. So uh, this is a very important point, right? Right now, there's a lot of um, an explosion of devices being marketed and sold, these low level light, laser light devices, then they have a lot of uh, beneficial uses but there's some claims, particularly with the brain, that um, are uh, exaggerated, really, uh, and and a lot of um, sort of overpriced devices um, in this market. Um, <clears throat> I, the, the basic research has clearly shown that um, when you're in those low power ranges, the light is not even going through the skin it's not even detectable by three centimeters of, from three centimeters at these very low power light. Uh, but if you have, uh, in this, exp these experiments by uh, Henderson and Morris, they, they, they can detect uh, sufficient light for, uh, you know, light that has sufficient good biological activity in cell culture. Um, they can detect it going through three centimeters of, of sheep sheepskin, and and there's there's brain studies uh, when they use 15 watts. Um, so uh, transcranial photobiomodulation now is is here's just a, a several papers that they, they, they've shown now that it can correct the brain waves. And it's measurable, so now we have a measurable outcome with with these things. These are high powered lasers again, not low powered. Um, and uh, Dr. Hidea has just done phenomenal stuff. We're, we're going to go over it. And, and Dr. Er, er, uh, Valerie has, is, is working with Aspen Laser and, and has incredible insight of what's really going on out there. Um, so so we'll just, we'll just uh, briefly talk about the importance of wavelength. You have to, you have to consider these things. Um, or else, again, you're not even going to penetrate the skin, and you don't want to uh, waste your time and money and and uh, and, and patients' uh, prognosis. Uh, so this just shows you um, some green light will not even go through the thumb, but red light will. Uh, the, the red light. Um, it. it uh, so, for example, uh, 1064 is advantageous because it it has no ab absorption of melanin. I mean, hardly. Any so particularly in dark-skinned individuals, you will not have as much upfront heat generation um, when you are at a very very high uh, power. This 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 becomes this can become a, a possibly an issue. Uh, otherwise, um, generally this wavelength 800, 830 maybe is often the best. It it has it has. This is, this is the absorption spectra of water. And you can see here's 800. There's just hardly any uh, of the light being absorbed by water. And this is uh, some green light. Uh, or, or I, th I, th I think that's green light, I, I have to double check. But th this is, uh, and, and then, and this just gives you an example of um, uh, when you are absorbing so much water, this is a carbon dioxide laser at, at uh, 10,000 nanometers or 10 microns um, wavelength. 
and it's getting so much water absorption that it, it vaporizes. Um, it just vaporizes things. So it's used surgically. But here you have no uh, water absorption and 810 can absorb, I mean, can penetrate uh, safely as much as eight centimeters. Um, uh, so, so, and then over here, we're just focusing on absorption of melanin. So for, for darker skinned individuals, the 1064 nanometer, this is the longest wavelength. You can see over here, water gets to be a problem. So this is gonna to be too much heat. But over here, um, 1064 is a nice, a nice area to be in for particularly darker skinned individuals, it looks like um, you have less heat and, and you can still get the light in there. So if you really wanna penetrate deeply, um, 1064 uh, in, in, a, in a darker skinned individual, it may be the most useful uh, based on what we can tell so far. So here's some basics of photobiomodulation reviewed. We have low level light therapy. It's very popular and inexpensive, but it, it cannot penetrate the skin. And it, but it, it can have some systemic effects because this, this, this maybe cells uh, uh, circulating near the skin or, or nerves that are you know, right at the edge of the skin can, can transmit uh, signals to, uh, and, and you know, paracrine uh, hormonal uh, local uh, secretory effects. But high powered uh, photobiomodulation, which is currently being used um, as much as 60 watts to my awareness, can penetrate as much as eight centimeters of tissue and, and is, is required for deeper tissue, deeper tissue. So that you can see that uh, it's being used. Transcranial photobiomodulation is being used in, in several clinical trials, including depression, anxiety, dementia, and traumatic brain injury. Here, um, we're just uh, covering uh, some, some presentation from uh, Dr. Hidea um, in a, a video presentation. Uh, this is really, really incredible stuff. So here's uh, quantitative electroencephalography of, of patients. In this video, he covers about, um, about five cases. And he shows that um, these uh, that he shows remarkable results. Now, now, Dr. Hidea is 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 a real pioneer. He's 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 been uh, practicing for over forty years. Um, he's very thorough. He he does all of the testing uh, in integrative medicine, looking for the lowest hanging fruit and and hormones and vitamins and 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 just everything. Very very thorough, and um, he he. He did, he's been using the, the high powered laser and he, he had a dramatic, uh, he describes a dramatic uh, correction of uh, the inability to recognize faces, which is prosopagnosia. This uh, person also had seizures and with the laser, there was an immediate effect that even lasted a month after stopping the uh, light. But it, uh, to date, it looks like there may be a need for uh, some level of uh, continual treatment uh, in, in a lot of these cases. He, he, he's seen improvements in um, visual distortions that helped improve the ability of individuals to read uh, in, a, in a, a paranoid schizophrenic with visual distortions and improvements in um, vascular dementia. And vascular dementia is the second most common dementia after Alzheimer's. Um, uh, in, this, in the prosopagnosia patient, she, she, she said, oh my God, I remember his face after, after I remember the one I worked with yesterday. And she, she had been suffering for about seven years, I think. Uh, Dr. Hedea himself said that his, his mind was just blown because uh, her facial recognition was literally cured immediately and, and never regressed. And the reason he, he explains is that she had neuronal tracts in certain areas of the brain. So he focuses on areas um, uh, identified with this, uh, putting the electrodes all over and, and finding where there's... Um, uh, he, he really understands the neuroanatomy. So he focuses there and um, does treatments uh, for a while. And he, 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 said, he said 
that in certain areas of the brain that were in a, I think it's luminal state actually alive, but not much more. But when you give them the energy and boom, the light went on. I never expected seizures to go away and didn't expect the hippocampus to normalize because it's so deep. And again, the high power was needed, uh, is absolutely needed for this kind of uh, response. So in summary, um, indications uh, with success to date um, that I'm aware of are vascular dementia, visual distortions in a paranoid schizophrenic, there's, a traumatic, there's traumatic brain injury cases and depression cases. Uh, here's some parameters for the laser that would appear uh, required for, for some of these favorable outcomes. High powers, um, uh, that, that's how many watts, um, not, not the low level light therapy on, on, uh, for, for, for a lot of these. Um, it's typically three or 10 times to a week. Um, and, and you can pulse it uh, so that uh, if, if it's hot, um, it can be very a short pulse, just uh, microseconds and then uh, bursts uh, pulsed so that uh, the heat doesn't accumulate, but the, uh, the, uh, the, the dose is administered, if you will. It's, it's it, to the deeper tissue at the high, the high power of the light. And here, these are some of the, the wavelengths that uh, can be used with these lasers and you can use combinations and, and this is an area of active investigation. Uh, multiple sclerosis, just a brief uh, comment, this uh, dimethyl fumarate is an oral therapeutic that's very popular, that's been as much as 5,000 a month that has been shown to work via the pathway that niacin uses, the flush pathway. So you can use niacin instead for $5 a month and get that flush pathway activated. And you also get NAD boosted where uh, dimethyl fumarate is not a precursor to boosting NAD. So um, niacin needs to be considered for multiple sclerosis much more. Um, so for so many reasons, multiple sclerosis is a neurodegenerative disease uh, and it, it's a loss of myelin and myelin requires a ton of energy to, 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 be, to be made. Uh, niacin makes great sense. Um, again, $7 a month versus as much as 5,000 to activate the same receptor, but even more with niacin as an, a booster of, of NAD. Thiamine is uh, one of the most taken for granted nutrients that really should be explored more at the higher doses. It's, it's woefully understudied uh, in basic, this is basic research is really, we need more basic research into what causes the depletion of niacin. In my opinion, there's, there's several forms that we don't study at all. And, um, but niacin is, very important for everything related to sugar and diabetes and, and, and dementia. And, and, and the pigeons, when they fed them unpolished rice in the 40s, their brains rot. Looks, it looks like Alzheimer's. It looks just like it. Um, and then there's just a ton of basic research and, uh, with thiamine uh, in, in Alzheimer's uh, animal models. It was the first discovered vitamin. Um, the correlations between uh, diabetes and Alzheimer's are so strong that it's sometimes, Alzheimer's is sometimes referred to as type three diabetes. And, and its studies show, suggest it could be a, a ghrelin uh, 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 resistance. So diabetes is often an insulin resistance, a ghrelin resistance, so in, in a similar pathway. Uh, Derek Lonsdale is a, a pioneering physician that uh, introduced the concept of high calorie malnutrition. So this is um, where your body is hungry and wants more nutrients, but you keep feeding it things that have way too much sugar. And this is depleting thiamine and thiamine and increasing the dependence on thiamine because you need thiamine for everything that metabolizes and deals with the sugar. So high calorie malnutrition 
Um, and then Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome is a, a dramatic example of what you can, you can get when you use high doses of thiamine. Today in the emergency room, this is an example where we, we treat um, a condition with high doses of thiamine. So when a patient comes in with their eye shaking and a history of being drunk and, and all the symptoms of Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, they will inject them with thiamine and their eye can stop shaking within minutes. And, and, and you know, uh, thiamine needs to be, these high doses of thiamine need to be really considered uh, for, for all this, all manner of dementia and, and multiple sclerosis, which also has, even multiple sclerosis, which has um, optic uh, problems. So with thiamine, there's, there's several forms that get in the brain a little bit better, like benfosamine, uh, salbutamine, and so on. Um, it's, th in this experiment, three months had cognitive benefits in Osmond, uh, three months of 300 milligrams. Uh, these are the uh, alternative forms of thiamine. This form is actually very stable, heat stable. Thiamine is, is known as the uh, heat labile vitamin. It's the one that has the vitamin taste because of that heat labile sulfur. And, and allothiamine is present in garlic. Uh, and, and so maybe uh, dried garlic, maybe powder, maybe um, tremendously beneficial. I, uh, it, yeah, so these are the forms of thiamine. And, the, and then you, you can just buy a, a, whole, a whole kilogram. I, I buy 500 grams of thiamine, just plain thiamine, and you can just use high doses. Or the, these are all, um, these two are more expensive. And then this kind um, is present in garlic, but you know, it's garlic. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, intranasal option, uh, which I, I just think somebody should, should look into. But since the question is, how do we get thiamine into the brain? And the intranasal route um, makes great sense. But um, it's, you know, so, you know, it's also kind of interesting that Parkinson's patients and COVID patients lose their sense of smell. Um, so uh, they might be able to take it easier and so on. And then there's this older doctor in Italy. He doesn't speak English. I've, I've talked to him. Uh, he needs a translator. And he's been just over and over. He's, he's, he's showing amazing results with just giving people a whole lot of thiamine. I, I routinely take about that much every day. And, and, or uh, injecting thiamine. It, he's had dramatic results for essential tumor, um, must, you know, he's had good results for all these things, multiple sclerosis, IBS, ataxia, Parkinson's, uh, just all these things. Uh, uh, Antonio Costatini, he's, he's, he's continually doing great research and he's not even uh, funded. He, do, he does it because it all started um, when he noticed uh, a, a patient that looked like Barry Berry, and he's, he's, he's an older man that uh, respected the, the, uh, this, this basic stuff. And, and he continues to publish um, amazing results. So, so we, what can we learn from, from genetics specifically for thiamine? You, you can see these, these diseases, like uh, they, they're really focused a lot on um, sort of sugar metabolism. Uh, you know, thiamine rescues these 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 kind of genetic uh, situations. Or, so so it's really thiamine really addresses sugar metabolism. Now just a, just a brief word about cholesterol because um, cholesterol is required for forming synapses. Um, it, in 2004, there was a really amazing study where they took neurons, they put it in a petri dish. They can't form a synapse. The neurons cannot make a connection. They, they need the glia, they need the supporting cells. So they, they try to figure out what, what is the supporting cell doing to, to facilitate the, this connection, the synapse. And they, and they eventually figured out it's the APOE that is carrying cholesterol. And this is really interesting because APOE is the, the gene with uh, Alzheimer's susceptibility, APOE4, and it's delivering the cholesterol. You need the cholesterol. 
and 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 when you start to think about this in the context of statins and for example this man who's a physician who uh lost his memory he had a sudden uh uh global transient amnesia from statins that would you know he would recover when he stopped taking the statins you 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 begin to think you know we need to revisit these statins uh this is a big concern um and and when you think about cholesterol total the the total cholesterol measure it's it's in fact the the lower cholesterol that is the bigger concern the higher cholesterol is kind of a general association sometimes with other problems, but it's, it's, it's the lower cholesterol that's associated with, with a lot of behavioral issues, suicide, violence, there's, there's studies showing this. And you can get more cholesterol by simply eating eggs, boiled eggs, but not raw. If you eat a lot of raw eggs, this can get to be a serious problem in, in theory because you can deplete biotin and, and biotin deficiency actually looks like multiple sclerosis. Um, <clears throat> Any, so, so uh, just a, an overview of, of, of how to treat now, we're trying to get the practical uh, applications. Um, we, we need to always remember that, you know, as great as niacin thia, and thiamine are and photobiomodulation, you must have sleep. Sleep is, if, you got, if you're not getting any sleep, uh, forget about it. Uh, there's studies that have shown that uh, sleep deprivation is more deadly than depriving a mouse of water. Um, and Stasha Goman has done wonderful work showing the importance of vitamin D and, and the utility of, of a big B100 pill. Uh, alcohol consumption can eliminate deep sleep um, and deep sleep is the most important for regenerating everything, including making NAD. We make NAD at night as well. Diuretics, you know, waking you up at night is not good. Um, uh, we have a real problem now with people staring at their phones and they just, you know, can't stop doing that at night. We need to, we need to, we need darkness. Sometimes um, you can do all of the above perfectly, but you have to figure out that, you know, it turns out glutens are causing what looks like multiple sclerosis, believe it or not. Um, there's even a case like that where they finally looked at, I shouldn't say finally, it's, it's who would know, but they found out that there's cross-reactivity with glutens. And then when they stopped the glutens, the myelination came back in a, in a patient. This is described by, in one of Perlmuter's books. And there's the most common, uh, the most common uh, food allergies are, are, are gluten and, and dairy. So it, it, it's, it's not a bad idea, especially when you're older, you don't need dairy anymore. That's too much calcium and increased cancer risk and so on. Um, and then addictions, we need to just keep that in mind when we're trying to address uh, these, these conditions. And vitamin B12 is of course uh, more important than anything uh, sometimes um, you, you, you can lose the absorption. One important thing to remember for this in your gut. So then you need to take it under your tongue. And if you can't, that, that, that's the simplest approach, but you can do injections. But uh, some people, even though they're taking it and even though uh, some tests suggest they have enough, they are not absorbing it uh, uh, into their brain because we don't typically measure the brain uh, with B12. And so to take it under the tongue is a, is a simple approach, but you can also do injections. Um, so we're getting to the summary here. Um, the failure of uh, clinical trials has been focusing on the endpoint. And what we want to do is focus on more on more basic upfront causes of the suffering, um, including NAD precursors, vitamin B1, uh, trans transcranial photobiomodulation to effectively turn things on. And the takeaways are to address these challenges, every biochemical pathway is only robust as the rate limiting nutrient. So magnesium and everything, I think sea salt is a good, um, a good way to address all of the tiny things like molybdenum is essential, nickel is important. You know, you, get, you can get 80 trace minerals I've heard in sea salt. So 
sea salt in the drinking water and two, two quarts of water daily sounds is it, for a 170 pound person is, is great. Um, so not a monotherapy approach, but uh, many t different things uh, like Dale Bredesen has shown. And then high dose niacin remains largely unexplored. Uh, energy is the most important thing for neurons, uh, you know, it, it, and, and, and we need even energy for the protein folding. And niacin and thiamine, you can do these safely, these, these two dosage regimens. They're totally safe and they can make all the difference. The, the, the most common deficiencies uh, uh, of all uh, from a nutritional uh, studies are typically magnesium and potassium, for example. And, and potassium has a particularly high correlation with cardiovascular uh, events in the morning, the number one killer of all. So, so um, it, it's, you know, potassium is a whole nother one. Uh, we're supposed to eat cups of vegetables to get enough RDA potassium. So, so uh, it's, you know, taking a little potassium at night to prevent that early morning heart attack the next day, it, it makes a lot of sense. And then uh, again, uh, we may have to use uh, transcranial photobiomodulation to, um, to turn the light on. We drink two quarts of water uh, for a 175 pound person. And then, you know, the most common deficiencies are magnesium, potassium, and then you might as well have some sea salt for the tiny, the trace minerals that are essential. And egg to get uh, the perfect uh, amount of uh, essential amino acids and cholesterol and basically everything for life. When you eat a steak, you eat everything for a muscle. You eat an egg, everything for life. Uh, walnuts are phenomenal. We haven't even talked about the essential uh, amino acid, uh, essential fatty acid, linoleic acid uh, deficiencies, which uh, cause neurodegenerative uh, problems. But they're in walnuts. Walnuts are exceptional. If you look at uh, PubMed walnuts, you, you, there's a big study even in Loma Linda, California, uh, where one of the blue zones, um, uh, Walnuts are just an exceptional nut that have been shown to decrease cognitive uh, dysfunction. Um, and, then, and then a diversity of food is, is great. Like with Terry Walls, who, who has cured herself of multiple sclerosis, uh, just eating like three cups of uh, the colorful veg, so three cups of the sulfur rich, like broccoli and, and the leafy and, and some other diets. Uh, she did everything um, when, when she was, she got to the point she needed a like a wheelchair and she's written all these books and it continues to do uh, wonderful um, research mostly diet driven uh, including elimination of, of gluten and milk uh, dairy uh, for addressing her multiple sclerosis and now others and, and other neurodegenerative uh, conditions and then uh, you know compliance is a big problem with anybody with Alzheimer's or related diseases so you can put everything into a smoothie. Like this is a, like an Indian spice tiffin. And this is how I, just how I live my life and I recommend my friends. So you can, you know, just put these into it like a mother making some food and, and, and then you can make something. Uh, so I, I just wanna acknowledge people, my, my, none of this would be possible uh, without my family enabling me to, to do everything and, and just keep me happy. Uh, Dr. Sunoda, uh, I worked with him on multiple sclerosis and, and he, he, he's just been a joy to work with. Abram Hoffer, uh, I'm forever in, in debt to, to his legacy and, and generosity and example of um, how to uh, share uh, your life experience and everything. Uh, and then the, the community at um, Aspen Laser, which which I, I'm just so grateful to you. I, I wouldn't know any of this. Um, and, and, and again, you cannot even get into the deeper regions of the brain. And even if you have, um, even if you have the perfect supplements and, and a lot of them can't get into the brain, but light might be the only option. So this is a really exciting, the transcranial high powered photobiomodulation field. And then these two educators, uh, really wonderful. Uh, Dr. Calderhead written all the textbooks and has videos uh, to teach you all about. Um, and he's actually in your neighborhood. He's in South Korea. And he, he's um, just a 
another generous soul that's a joy. To, he's fun to talk to. Uh, that will teach you everything about uh, lasers. And Andre Summers too. Uh, he's he's uh, really figure, figuring out the basics of how this works. So um, yeah, so thank you so much for your attention. Uh, I'll try to get ready for uh, questions here. Uh, a few questions on the chat. Uh, Okay. Okay. Um, this is this is the top. Looks like we are. Clever. Oh, I see. Only a few. Dr. Tell what you have sharing experience regarding aromatic as, amino acids and use of gliophosphate, and thanks to your mental health. Um, yeah, with the with the DDT glyoph. I don't know about the the Shikimat pathway. Uh, very well and, and the glyphosate very well. My, my, my impression is that um, there might be a microbiome story, a, 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 a mechanism with, with that, uh, with, with that. And I, but I do think it's a, a serious and real concern. Um, I just, I, I'm, not sh I'm not so sure about uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of that. And, and there may be some chelation problems too. Will NMN pass through the gut digestive? Uh, yeah, I th I, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, and it, uh, Nick, I th I, NMN is, is a very exciting molecule, particularly for uh, diabetes and, and, and that stuff. It's really exciting. It doesn't do the flush pathway uh, and it's expensive, but um, I, I think it might turn out to be one of the most powerful things for diabetes. Uh, it's got some really interesting uh, properties there. Uh, what is the maximum recommended dose plus glutamine to produce NAD? Oh, um, well, I guess the maximum dose for niacin from Hoffer's life of experience was 18 grams a day. And that's taken, you know, uh, in divided doses, probably five or six times. Uh, glutamine is, uh, the clinical trials were 10 to 15 grams, so that's like up to three teaspoons of glutamine. And, and I don't think there's much of an, any adverse response with glutamine. Uh, it's already the most abundant amino acid in our sera, and uh, it's, it's, it's been shown to work in burn patients. So I, I think of niacin and, and glutamine as involved in regeneration, cellular regeneration, uh, when it, you know, because of the burn patient response. Any advantage of taking terastil bean instead of resveratrol? I, I don't know as far as terastil bean, still bean versus resveratrol. I, I, I tend to just, um, I tend to just focus on resveratrol just with the market, what it is, and literally thousands of probable well, hundreds of resveratrol companies that brings the price down and, and so on. So I, I just kind of Either that or, yeah, food is medicine. Uh, how can we handle patients that we give niacin with a low dose, but a horrible flush? Okay, so you can definitely use niacinamide. You can do the same amount, same dosages up to 18 grams, but uh, the 18 again is, is extreme. Um, so you could, so I, I like a little bit of flush. Um, and so for, if someone's flushing at 50 milligrams, do that and then maybe complement it with glutamine or, or, and and because uh, glutamine is part of the tryptophan de novo NAD biosynthetic pathway as well. And you can also do niacinamide. Um, what's your opinion about apigenin and, and quercetin? Um, I think I think there might be something there. Um, there the, I think that's more of a working on the, the enzymes affecting the transcriptional levels of those things. Um, I haven't studied them quantitatively very much. Um, let's see, how to manage, let's see. How to manage hot flushing niacin effect. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I, I've noticed particularly uh, 
lighter weight uh, Asian women and postmenopausal women have had dramatic uh, flush response. Although uh, there was a guy we called Iron Man, he was our stopper on my soccer team that took himself to the emergency room when he took niacin once. So, uh, um, like I said, I, I would start low, just start low. It's just start low and get to know the niacin. Start with 50 milligrams, get to know it. Um, uh, let's see. Wouldn't give long-term niacin cause depletion of others. Um, I, 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 yeah, I, long-term, that's a good question. Um, you know, it cures schizophrenics that, you know, these people that are more dependent on it, but the question of maybe they're, they are in part, well, I, I, I yeah, I, I, there's just, it, niacin has been used for 60 years uh, safely. And, but again, there was that slight anemia in, in that clinical trial. Um, so I, 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 I wonder about that too. If you figure it out, let me know. I've wondered about maybe B6 and methylation and some connections, but I, I have not found uh, much in the way of obvious uh, imbalances from consistent high dose niacin. NAD infusion, is it helpful? I, I think maybe I, I, that's um, something I haven't looked into enough. Um, it's definitely expensive. Can glutamine be oxidized into glutamate and would produce detrimental effect? Um, I, I, uh, again, um, I don't see um, much adverse problems or downsides with glutamine. Um, so I don't, I don't think so, uh, but uh, yeah. Anyone else have any questions? You can unmute yourselves. Oh, me? Oh, oh okay. Uh, no, no, uh, the participants, if they have any oh, questions. Okay. Yeah, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, can, can I be excused for just a second and go to the bathroom? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Safian, you are unmuted. I've unmuted everybody. Yes, you can't unmute. No, no. Can you try now? I think you do. I've unmuted everyone. Everyone, everyone. Yeah, so you can unmute yourself. Again. 
we lost uh, we lost Dr. William. I think you have to sign in again. Send him a text, I think, see what happens. Sir, he's going to the... Okay, it works now. Thank you, Shati. It works You're welcome. Now. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, wait for him to sign in, because he said he's going to the bathroom. Is he responding to the No. Okay, he's back. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm back. Okay, uh, Mr. Sofian, you've got a question for? Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> good night, uh, Doc. Sofian again from Jakarta. Uh, thank you so much for bringing us so many uh, new stuff tonight in your presentation, but I, I want to address two things, yeah? Two very important things, I think, yeah? Uh, the first is, you propose that in the future, we should change to correct the target in combating neurodegenerative disease by being focused more on bioenergetics and protein foldings. And I will emphasize more on protein folding. A second, you mentioned that since heat shock foldings is greater than heat shock proteins, so even with the help of lysosome, the small organelle in our cells that function as a recycling center, it is not easy for neurons to be regenerated, I assume for older people. And this is my concern actually. Let's say if we can make a state of conditions Whereas heat shock protein now is actually greater than heat shock foldings, let's say through 
certain autophagy or using uh, senolytic drugs, okay, or certain peptides such as FOXO4, GRI, or other type of modulators, and we can get rid of this whole or the big junk of this uh, protein aggregates, misfolding protein, cell debris, then will it be possible later on in our old age, we can still maintain our neurogenesis and also synaptic plasticity, the neurotransmitter between neurons to other neurons using dendritic cells. That's my uh, questions. Thank you, Doc. Okay, so if I if I understand you, you're you're um, you're saying that it looks like you you're you're of the opinion that uh, it, it's more of the protein folding and 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 the lysozyme and and autophagy that um, we 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 would benefit from really focusing on. Mm -hmm. Is is that correct? Uh, actually, no. But uh, in one of your slides, you mentioned that in the future, the focus in healing this neurodegenerative disease, we should focus more on two things, bioenergetics, I think using NAD, one thing. And the second is protein folding. It's on your slide. So that's why I emphasize more on protein folding. Because I assume that if we cannot get rid of this kind of misfolded protein, cell debris, senescent cells, I think uh, this will create the amyloid beta plot in uh, Alzheimer disease, okay, or other uh, neurodegenerative disease such as Parkinson, ALS, and other. The plot yeah. in our brain. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, I don't know, it sounds like it sounds like we're um, we're on the same page. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, um, it, 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 it just it just it just has to be sort of upfront uh, addressing the cause instead of uh, you know a biological um, that um, stops one particular uh, molecular target uh, when actually a lot of these neurodegenerative diseases have more than one um, protein falling out of solution. It's not just beta amyloid it's also tau in alzheimer's and and then these other ones they have you know parkinson's has alpha synuclein but I, I think it has also sometimes others like probably tdp 43 so it, it's you know yeah we have to we have to um increase the the power of the stress response the folding i i i believe and and that requires energy uh and, and NAD uh, is, is uh, easily depleted by stresses, um, you know, through the activation of the PARP. So we have to be ready for that. Um, with, with multiple sclerosis, for example, um, they had these sudden attacks and then they have progressive loss. So yeah. maybe in a, something happens, something, some stress triggers an attack and now they can't move that eye for the rest of their life, or eventually they they can't walk. Or right. Annette Funicello, the mouseketeer, you know, she couldn't breathe. And um, <clears throat> uh, um, so, before the NAD is depleted from whatever sets off that stress, they would do well, in my opinion, to always have their NAD levels up by taking three grams of niacin and three grams of glutamine, three you know, one gram of each three times a day. Um, or, you know, if, if they can't stand the flush, then three grams of niacinamide. And, and that at the bare minimum that I totally believe in mm -hmm. um, can, will, will have dramatic effects for, uh, in my opinion, uh, multiple sclerosis and and again, niacin also works on the uh, flush pathway. But I, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I think I've answered the question uh, probably. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
Anyone else? Anybody else have got any more questions? Um, the inositol hexanicotinate, um, I, I don't think it works as well as niacin, no. Um, I think that one does not um, help with lipids. Um, I, 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 I have to double check that, I, I could double check that, but I, I prefer the simple molecule in nature. Um, I don't know if he, not, uh, hexanicotinate exists in nature, but uh, yeah. Uh, I think I, I prefer niacin. Would high dose niacin be sufficient to produce NMN? Um, it, it, technically it produces an AMN, but uh, and and uh, but that uh, works in a similar pathway. Um, um, so um, it might be you know six in one, half a dozen the other. Um, Uh, no more questions? Yeah. Okay, if there are no more questions, I think I just want to comment, uh, William, if you don't mind, on what uh, Dr. Sofian was asking. Um, so he was, uh, I think he was trying to clarify that bioenergetics and protein folding should be the focus of the future. And of course, this uh, we have learned a lot about NAD. Uh, photobiomodulation is something new to us, but we have learned some interesting facts. But what he was trying to emphasize is that the good old ways of self-cleansing, um, eating your own self through uh, fasting and intermittent fasting, which oh, stimulates no. uh, autophagy and uh, you know removal of cell debris and, and folded proteins. Uh, should that also be considered? Uh, as you mentioned that we don't believe in monotherapy. Um, all this uh, should be part and parcel of uh, living a healthier life and trying to reverse the diseases that one faces. Uh, I think probably, I think that's what Sofia was asking. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. A combination of what we have to do. Yeah, I, I'm on board with that completely. I, I, I think I think fasting, you know, it cures everything. It's the one thing Muhammad, um, uh, Jesus and Buddha agreed on. It, it Fasting is incredible, but but uh, you have to have the trace minerals, of course. Um, and 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 I, I, I yeah, I think that um, I. Yes. Th yeah. Thank you. Um, that makes that makes great sense. Yeah. To um, consider, uh, but as, especially in the context of like cancer, um, fasting is the body's natural response um, uh, for a reason. Uh, I mean, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, um, with neurodegenerative disease and, and fasting and autophagy, um, I. Uh, uh, I, 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 yeah, that's a, that's ex that makes you think because because you you need energy and 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 there's a lot of focus on um, uh, ketone bodies and ketogenic diets uh, for brain health and protection and and and, and TBIs and models and beta hydroxybutyrate um, to to maintain the energy. Um, so with fasting, I guess you you do produce more of those. Uh, and you use that instead of glucose in your brain, but um, that, that yeah, that's a, that's that's an interesting question. I um, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I think but, basically, uh, when you uh, rest your body, you focus the energy on more on uh, repair and regeneration uh, instead of spending a lot of energy on uh, metabolism. That means digesting and assimilating food. Uh, if you rest it, then the uh, body knows what to do with the energy. The energy will be utilized in the areas where it needs repair. 
and it needs uh, where it, uh, it needs regeneration. Um, okay, William, it was uh, very nice having you on these two days. We are very thankful for your uh, sharing of information. And I'm sure doctors found these uh, two lectures very useful. Um, thank you very much, William. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Enjoyed it. We'll keep in touch. Great. Okay. Um, I will share the QR code for the CPD points. And uh, okay, here we go. Um, the other thing is. Next week's talk is on Sunday on uh, 28th of February, and we will start at 6 p.m. Malaysian time.